Hey folks, my name is Michele and today I want to talk about Shader Boy. Shader Boy is a program that allows us to uh, render audiovisuals, shaders at different resolutions, up to 8K resolution and in different formats, VR, stereoscopic, what have you. Even complex shaders can be rendered at high frame rates because Shader Boy allows us to render offline. So also Shader Boy allows us to uh, use uh, audio and MIDI inputs. Uh, so we can control parameters in the shaders using audio and MIDI, which makes it very convenient for um, audiovisual composers, VJs, uh, shader programmers that just want to have parameters that are controllable from different kinds of platforms. In the videos that I'm gonna post about Shader Boy, I wanna talk about how to use this uh, powerful tool. And today I want to um, just get into the beginning stages of using Shader Boy, so downloading it and see how it works. First thing we need to do is to go to the website where we can download Shader Boy. So right, right now the website is still under construction and uh, it's shaderboy.net and that will direct you to a Discord channel for now, you will have a place where you can download uh, Shutter Boy. So in in this case, uh, in in this page, you you will see Shutter Boy for different OS. I'm now on Windows. Uh, I already downloaded it, and so we can start running Shutter Boy. Use the path where my file, my executable is, and then at that point, I'm in that folder and I can start running uh, Shader Boy. The first thing I, I can do is just uh, run the program. I'm in the PowerShell right now. Uh, so I can just do, I can use the abbreviated name of Shader Boy. I believe you can use the full name as well. And then if you do a dash I, that's my shader input. And I can use a uh, the ID from an ID from uh, Shader Toy. I just created a new shader and that's my uh, ID, the last part of the address. If I copy that and then paste it here, this is my window that it's now reporting the default shader that it's created when I create a new shader. One thing that we can do uh, to know what my options are is just to run Shader Boy with the uh, with the command help and um, it the terminal will print all of the different commands that I can have and uh, you can see how I can have a record video and so we can start recording uh, the shader that I have. If I want to know about the command rec I can just run help and rec. The terminal will print a bunch of different sub commands that I have for the command rec. So um, one the length um, is let's use the the length sub, sub command now. We can just run our shader, the shader that I had um, already loaded, the basic shader, and then just do rec and then l dash l and then record like five seconds for instance, five seconds. So now it's running, it's recording and it recorded five seconds. And now uh, in my directory where I have my uh, Shader Boy folder, now I have my recorded shader here, um, which has been saved as an MP4. So that's good. Uh, that's one of the many advantages of using this program. Another advantage of using Shader Boy is that I can use my text editor to do um, my shader coding. If I do Shader Boy help, I can see how I can download and unpack a shader in different uh, frag files. Great. So um, what do I need to do? Well, I can do again Shader Boy help DL, um, and this is the kind of uh, pro the kind of command that I need to give uh, the DL command, then the shader ID, and then you can give an out directory. So I can do shader, uh, shader boy, 
and then DL and then the shader ID and shader boy has extracted all my files and he has put it into the directory shader boy and the subdirectory extracted shaders so what I can do now is uh, open it with uh, Visual Studio Code. I have two files. One is my image. In case I had buffers, I would have also buffers or a common file as well. But in this case, I just have a simple shader and I have a shader run file. Uh, the shader run actually is a description of the inputs of the shader. So we will be able to actually create new inputs, even create custom inputs such as webcams, and cube maps from this file. Uh, in this case, I have loaded already in my shader toy, I already had created one input. This is the input that it's required for us to be using MIDI, uh, a MIDI input into the shader. It's described into the MIDI file, as you can see here. Uh, this is the track that is required for us to be able to access a MIDI input. So now I can start running this shader that I just uh, unpacked in my uh, local extracted shader folder and start editing from my editor and see the changes reflected in the shader itself. So to do that, I need to do uh, shader boy and then the familiar dash I command for input for the input shader. And I need to pass the name of my um, where the where the uh, fragment files are located. So in in this case, this the the name that it's created when I download the shader from Shader Toy, that's the name I need to pass uh, together with the path. Whenever I save my shader file, it will be immediately reflected in the in Shader Boy. Okay, so the next step would be to see how I can use uh, these custom inputs. And in particular, I want to talk about the MIDI input, which is a very powerful tool because it allows us to have many different, um, many different parameters that can be input at once. So let's go back to the README file. The MIDI input will be it will come in the form of a texture. The width is 128 pixels and the height is uh, 5 times 16. So for each MIDI channel, and uh, there are 16 MIDI channels total, that's the limitation of MIDI, we have five rows per channel. For each of the 128, we'll have a CC, which is a control change input. So I have created a um, Reaper session with a with a MIDI file and you can see there are some notes here and I have a control change here uh, on CC9 but I also need at this point to have a dash M for MIDI and give it a name of a MIDI port in this case I'm using virtual MIDI ports uh, using the loop MIDI a uh, little app which is very useful for this kind of work and in this case I'm going to use the loop MIDI to connect uh, my Reaper uh, to Shader Boy. I'm going to output my MIDI track to my port 1 and I can see how the loop MIDI is reporting uh, the data it's coming through and that's good and then I need to give Shader Boy the, uh, the MIDI flag with the name of the port. I can see those changes reflected here. This is the pitch and this is my CC control data. But what if I want to just extract one of these uh, text cells to control something in my shader? Well, I just need to know what where I'm sending the data to and then work with that pixel. In this case, I'm sending, um, I'm sending control data uh, control change data uh, from uh, CC9 uh, on channel 1. This is uh, channel 1, MIDI channel 1, and my control change is on, on, on 
uh, index nine. So I can just uh, extract this, and I what I need to do is to do um, just get a float uh, that's gonna be from i channel zero, and then i vec two, and my x position is gonna be nine, which is my uh, CC, the CC I'm using is going to be on the third row. And in case this was another MIDI channel, I would need to offset this three by the number of MIDI channels times five. Just get the X value. And now I can have a VEC4 CC. And now uh, I'm just extracting the um, the CC value from uh, from my Reaper session. So if I change, if I now change my, um, if I now change my CC data to something a little more erratic, uh, that will be reflected in my window. Crucially, this uh, will be also uh, can be done through a MIDI file, so I can have. Uh, MIDI data saved in a MIDI file uh, as complex as I want and then I can use that MIDI file to control the shader over time and I can uh, render it offline so even if it's um, even if it's a very complex shader that needs to run at um, virtual time so slower than real time um, the, um, the MIDI file will be read according to the slow down time which is great because you can actually have very complex scenes uh, and have just a reliable way of controlling parameters over time even if it's rendering rendering at uh, less than real time so i want to stop here for now uh, it is of course as you can imagine like a broad topic and i also only touched on a few points but I hope this is enough uh, to get you an idea of what you can do with Shader Boy. Um, please let me know in the comments if you have questions connect to the discord channel and um, Sunny Badger who's a developer of this program um, is very responsive and has been very helpful if you like this video subscribe and like um, stay tuned for more and until the next time, take care.